Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to today's cryptocurrencies update for Friday, October the 18th, 2024. Uh, yesterday was no update, uh, pretty much as everything was still on track. And I showed you the potential breakout from a triangle and a long term bull flag that we've been tracking. And I think today we got the, the, that um, breakout. So now the question is do we have lift off, especially for Bitcoin? The other ones we're not too certain about just yet, but Bitcoin of all of them looks still the strongest. Ethereum still has a lot of catching up to do. And today as well, I want to show you a lot of similar things uh, that we've covered before. So nothing too new, but please remember the power of repetition is that at some point um, we can um, recite it in our sleep. That is, of course, also the power of commercials you see on TV or hear on radio and see and read on the Internet and social media. It's all about repetition. So it becomes one. So you become one with the charts, whichever you follow. I prefer uh, Bitcoin. Um, why? Because it so far is the most bullish of them all and the best looking chart. So we're going to go straight to the charts because it is Friday and you have a nice long weekend ahead of you. And I don't want to bore you too much uh, with some of these similar things we have talked about before. This is Binance coin. We're pretty much back to where we were on Wednesday. So to say, it's still holding above the critical first warning level. So honestly, nothing has changed. And we now still need to break above 620. If we do, we can target 760 per this question mark three. It is still question marks, but we're holding this. So I want to see above 620. If we do that, uh, again, on symmetry, we can target the 760, which will be uh, close to a retest, of course, of the all-time high at 720. It is very logical for price to do that. Then we'll see a pullback probably to about 680 and then another rally probably to about 790. Another pullback to once again uh, 680, probably a little bit higher. And then a final rally into that 850 zone, um, which I thought I had a chart already lined up for. But uh, let me just duplicate this one and we'll quickly pull it up. Then you see, of course, the Binance coin monthly chart that we're tracking. This one that we are in this wave five. All continues on holding above the warning levels. So far, we're doing it because otherwise the wave five has, of course, already topped here earlier this year. Quite simple. Moving on to Bitcoin. This is our preferred wave count tracking along really nice. We placed this wave four label here yesterday. It's holding that level and we should now be in this wave five. Uh, this orange wave C, by the way, can once again subdivide into an ABC as well. Or this is all of wave one, etc. Okay, so there's still a lot of question marks. But for now, things are holding and we can move the warning levels. We have broken above the September high, which is critical. So the next resistance is obviously here at the July high. We're going to place it right there. But this is now still our preferred wave count. So that is now our the next target. We're going to look for 70,000. So we're going to raise the first warning level to yesterday's low. Okay. Then I'm going to raise the second warning level to the previous first warning level. Then I'm going to raise this warning level, the third one, to the wave one. And that will keep the final warning level as is. And this is, of course, bullish. As, as long as you can raise warning levels in an uptrend, it is really good uh, because it means that we are continually making higher highs and higher lows. I see zero signs of um, selling or anything. Uh, money flow does need to start to confirm some of this um, uptrend, but I think we are in a similar uh, setup as we were here in July, as you can see right there. And so we were right there. And in July, as you can see, we just got started, right? This, this uptrend. And you think, well, we're already in this final fifth wave, but often these final fifth waves are extended waves um, in, in the crypto world. So I'm still looking here for at least 70,000. Um, above that, we're going to go to 72,000, potentially then as high as 78,000. This is the daily chart that I shared with you uh, yesterday, and I added here this long um, trend down, very sloppy, corrective looking, and that we had first a breakout above this black, um, yeah, what is it, diagonal type of shape, right? It's diagonal type of shape, broke out, retested it once, twice, three times, four times, and all the breakouts held, and we're off to the races. 
Then, of course, the next um, litmus test was a breakout above this trend line. Remember, breakouts can be fake outs, right? There's no guarantee. But so far, this is good. I tested it once, twice, three times, and four times might be the charm. So the first breakout from this triangular pattern targets 76,000. Okay, and where does 76,000 get us? Very close to this 161.8% extension. Okay, so far so good. Then we have the second breakout, which is of course the width of this parallel trend channel we were in, which can target 83,000. Where does 83,000 get us? Nicely to this upper end of the ideal wave three of three target zone. Okay, so that's really nice. So this matches quite nicely for a third wave of the third wave for the actual end of the third wave. So this is what we're going to look at. So somewhere around 80,000 plus or minus 4,000, right? That's going to be the target zone for this um, run up since the August low. This is then um, the weekly chart. I shared this one on Twitter uh, as well. So nothing really new. You see this massive uh, bull flag triangle pattern here. Uh, it's really beautiful. And that we on a weekly basis, I know the week is not over yet, start to see a breakout, right? Resistance, 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 resistance. And if we close above it, I uh, do expect again a retest on a weekly basis, just as we, of course, had a retest, you know, here for this breakout. You always get a, a, re a retest, and then the market has to decide if the breakout will hold or if it's a fake out. I think it will hold. And then the symmetry will target 89,000. So we have 76,000, 84,000, 89,000, at all kind of points in the same direction, much higher. Um, so there seems to be at least uh, another $5,000 to go, which is another 12 and a half percent at a minimum. Okay, that's kind of what we're looking for. And uh, probably another 20,000, which is uh, almost another 30% to go. So there's plenty of upside left. I know within the crypto world, we're always thinking of triple to quadruple digits. But as uh, Bitcoin matures and the waves mature as well, meaning higher and higher degrees, uh, the, the, the percent gains will be less, right? A, a gain from one to two dollars is 100%. It's very easy to go from one to two dollars. But if you are at a thousand, you need to get to 2000, which is in absolute terms, of course, a much bigger gain. In percent terms, it's the same gain. So that's always the um, problem with the further we get in time, there's a just a law of diminishing returns. But still plenty of upside, still looks bullish. We've been bullish for quite a while, I think now, uh, on Bitcoin, all contingent on holding above the warning levels, and it's doing that. So we raise the warning levels, and this looks good. This looks constructive. Um, I cannot be more pleased about Bitcoin's chart setup than I have been in a long time. And this is, of course, our alternative. Uh, we've raised not. We have not raised the warning levels for the bears, of course. Uh, we've broken above the first one, the second one, and now setting uh, aim for the third one, uh, which is this B wave high, of course, which coincides with, of course, this purple level, right? But we're already in this blue wave five. This is five waves up. Okay, so this looks really good. But now, of course, we need to hold above those warning levels. And if we do, uh, then this becomes less and less likely. Again, uh, as I wrote on the chart uh, before, it's, it's construed... Um, not even know sure if that's the right word. Um, it is uh, a little bit, um, you know, kind of made up, right? Made up possibility, not likely. But it was looking higher, as was the preferred wave count. Higher it is, so far so good. So I don't even care too much in that sense of if it's really correct or not. If the alternative and the preferred wave count are both looking higher um, over the next days to weeks, uh, then it's most likely higher, right? If then the Alternative wave count starts to look significantly lower. Uh, then we have uh, some contradiction going on where we should pay more attention. But otherwise, it, it is almost like a, that's a no-brainer. Both wave counts look higher. Whoa, that's great. So higher it is, most likely. So, so far, so good. I like it. Now, on to Ethereum, the laggard. I uh, haven't changed much. I just adjusted the numbers. So Bitcoin right now is only 6% from its all-time high. Well, it seems quite obvious that it will probably break above that all-time high, right? That means that Ethereum now has still 44% uh, upside to catch up, okay? So it's still a sucker in the room. That's really it. So if Ethereum was trading one-to-one -one with Bitcoin, it should now be at 3850. It's not even above 2800, let alone the 2722 level that we identified um, on 
the weekly chart, I believe it was. So I think that this wave counts starts to make more and more sense. Instead of the one, two, one, two setup, that this was a large A, B, C of this triangular wave four, and that Ethereum is just going to get going. Um, that would be quite nice. Where we maybe at the, some point we can rotate out of Bitcoin and into Ethereum. And you can see as long as we hold above this uptrend line, we're good, right? That's that's really nice. But we haven't even broken above the second warning level for the bears, which is 2,800, arguably 2,722. But otherwise, it still has a lot of, but it also means there's still a lot of potential. Okay, so that's what we're looking for and waiting for. And as long as we hold above the August and September lows, we can move higher, but I do really want to see it go above 27, 2800. That'd be really nice. And then it has uh, a lot more upside potential, in my humble opinion, compared to Bitcoin. Now, look at the um, technical indicators. There is definitely improvement. Uh, we're back above the 50, the 10, and the 20, still below the 200 day. So, compared to Bitcoin, of course, this chart is in a way worse shape, but it's trying to also scramble back above the Ichimoku cloud. And we haven't done that uh, pretty much since July. Yeah, uh, actually almost since June. We got above it for one day, I believe, here in July. So that doesn't count. So, so it's been almost half a year that we've not been above the Ichimoku cloud. So that would also be a significant development. So upside potential wise, this looks great. We just need to see follow through above these key price levels to make me also more comfortable and be able to say, well, the sucker has turned into a beautiful flower it is uh, um, you know in in the in development but it hasn't fully blossomed yet so then if we get this way for completed we break above that 2800 level and then especially of course um above the the recent highs made this year uh, which i believe are at around 3000 something let's see if i can find the chart there something around or even 4000 but I'll go with 3,000 and a half, fine with me. <laughs> then we are looking for potentially seven and a half to 12 and a half thousand. But beggars can be choosers. We still have a lot of work to do. This is Solana, still has the potential for this one, two, three, four, five setup. Uh, also here, we're back above the 200 day moving average, back above the Ichimoku cloud, and back above the 20 and the 50. So as long as we stay above those, those charts can slowly improve and start to look like something we had, of course, in February, March here on the left-hand side of your uh, screen. That's what we like to see. This is slop. And now we need to break, of course, above the September high as we saw for Bitcoin. That needs to happen. If that can happen, then we'll be looking for this wave three into the 190s, etc. So this path is still potential, not confirmed. And uh, I think we can raise the warning levels for the bulls accordingly. So now the first warning level is going to be pretty much yesterday's low. Okay. The second warning level, um, I'm going to put it probably somewhere around here at around 140. The third warning level is going to be here. And the final warning level is still at the September low because Solana has not made as much progress. So we're raising the warning levels slightly, but not yet as much as for Bitcoin. So we still have a little bit of uh, room left for improvement. Because bigger picture wise, over 210 can still target 300. I know I've shared this with you before, but remember the slides you know, by repetition. So you know it and below 120 targets 85 and below 85 targets 45. But as you can see, if we keep on moving higher in Solana, we'll have a nice uh, chart where Prices above the 5, the 10, the 20, and the 50 month moving average. Don't have a 200 month moving average yet because Solana hasn't traded that long. And um, there's also a lot of positive chatter, of course, about Solana and its applications. So, so that uh, is, of course, taken into consideration by traders and investors. Um, um, might actually be more positive than that of Ethereum. Uh, who knows? Um, I just follow price because price pays. I'm not much of a fundamentalist, so to say, but also that, of course, is important. And that is taken into consideration, as I said, by traders and investors that then will decide if they should buy or sell Solana. So that then is, of course, translated into price. So I don't need to worry about those fundamental issues. I let other people worry about that. All that is then expressed in price. So we're very, very close, I think, soon to a answer on if we finally going to get this fifth wave higher. Solana, you have been now 
messing around for one, two, three, four, five, six months, potentially seven with October. And that should be enough of a sideways consolidation. Then we'll get, of course, a massive pull flag as well uh, from about 30 uh, to 210. So that's 180 and 180 plus 120, right? That's so you add this to that targets, 300, uh, in case you wonder what I'm talking about. So then this is your, uh, your, your flag, okay, right there. This is your flag, that one. This is then your flag pole here. And then we simply add that to the bottom of the flag. And where does that get us? Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. I like it. So keep that in mind. This is the potential we're seeing in the chart. 120 is critical. All right, moving on to the ETFs that track uh, Bitcoin. This is uh, BITO. Nice breakout here as well. Symmetry now targets around 25 on this breakout. Okay, so we held the breakout yesterday. Again, a small retest. Let's see if it can continue. And the warning levels um, are uh, still the same. That is then, of course, uh, the high here, the low here, the high here, and the low here. So as long as we stay above those, we can look for 25 on BITO. IBIT as well. We continue to track this impulse, ideally to 46, then back to 41, and then to 49, assuming a standard Fibonacci-based impulse pattern. Um, I see no reason to change my tune. We have not broken below the first warning level. We're moving higher. Uh, we're at the upper Bollinger Band. Bollinger Bands are expanding. I uh, don't have them on BITO, but look at the trend in BITO. We're above the 10, which is above the 20, which is above the 50. The 50 is now only below the 200 day. Uh, meanwhile, we're above the Ichimoku cloud, which is green and rising. 100%, no, not 100%. This is about a 90% bullish chart. Pretty good. All right. Crypto miners, going to wrap this up because I have to uh, populate my ETF and uh, Magnificent 7 trading alert emails. If you're not on the list, you're missing out. <laughs> um, breakout here uh, already uh, over the last previous two days here above 18, uh, which we knew would then target 19. And we're right here, uh, just a little bit almost at 19. Well, it's actually 18.19. If we can get above it, again, that targets 24 and a half, potentially higher based on simple symmetry. This looks also a strong chart. Of course, resistance is at a 200 day and the Ichimoku cloud, but this looks good. And we can raise the warning levels uh, for the bulls accordingly. And the first warning level is then of course um, here, the eight, this level, right? That we've been bumping our head in quite some time. Then the second warning level will be here. And I'm going to leave the third and the fourth warning level as is. So not that much, um, Improvement in warning levels yet, just the first two, but so far so good. That That is definitely better than nothing. And I see no reason to change my tune. So bigger picture wise, this might be gearing up for this three of three of three wave. Uh, according to this wave counter, one, two, one, two. Uh, but also that this could be all of this black wave two, which would match with that of Riot, where we also have this potential black wave two. But Riot needs to uh, at least move above uh, 15 to confirm this, which will break it above the 50 um, month moving average as well. And then we can target somewhere in the 35 to 37 and a half for this wave 3C. And the same here for um, Mara, which can then target uh, somewhere, I believe in the 50s to 60s, right? So something like that. That is of course what we're gonna look for. This is then your wave one, and this is then your uh, wave, wave two, something like that. So I might make sure I get the price correct. There we go. And then we're going to look for that into the 60s. Potentially only 44, but um, that would be a CSA relationship. But as you can see here, Mara needs to get over 20, right? Then it gets back above the 200 month moving average. That would be very constructive. Uh, but this wave count here aligns with the riot uh, for the miners. So we'll see how um, price will do in the future. But for now, uh, we do have on the... Uh, short term, uh, a little bit better setup. We need to get above that 19 level. Uh, that would be really good on Mara. So everything looks good. Everything looks on track. I see no reason to change my tune uh, until we go below the critical warning levels, but everything else is still on track, especially for Bitcoin. Uh, Binance coin, Solana uh, still have some catching up to do, especially also Ethereum, but Ethereum is definitely not deteriorating. It's also improving, but above 28 would 
hundred would be uh, really uh, confirming my case for a run to, I would say, ten thousand plus or minus two and a half thousand, with a first stop somewhere at the all-time highs. Take care, trade safe, and I'll catch you all next week.